Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Mondo Show. My name is Mondo. Today is going to be a very powerful show. Stay tuned. I got some special guests that are going to be joining me in just a few moments. But on May 25th, 2020, George Floyd was brutally murdered right before our eyes. This has opened up a wound in America's history once again that is forcing us to look at where we are as a nation. You know, in the midst of all this trials, in the midst of all this crisis, protesters have gone out in the streets marching, some peacefully, others have been looting and burning buildings and whatnot, but the voice of the people is once again being heard. As a nation, we are in a turning point. As a people, we're looking for answers. But in the midst of this, I, I want to tell you something. Where sin abounds, much more grace abounds. And this is the hour where we have to face ourselves and look at ourselves in the mirror and wonder what is God saying through all this crisis that are taking place. You know, in America, we haven't dealt with the sin. And anytime you don't deal with sin as a nation, God begins to judge it. But at the same time, it's an opportunity for God to restore and heal the people and the land that he has given us. On today's program, I have a very special guest. As a matter of fact, it's a price that most people don't want to pay. When you ask God, use me, God, sometimes you don't know how God is going to use you. And in the middle of your uh, life, God interrupts you and puts a call to go into where people live. And that's what very few people are willing to do today. You know what? I admire this couple. I admire them because when they hear from God, they stepped in into a moment in life when crisis hits, they began to take the steps that God had ordered them to take and go into the midst of the chaos and ground zero of where this murder took place. Now, what the media is not going to show you is what we're about to talk about. Sure, there's people marching all over the nation and all over the world. Sure, there's looting taking place and burning of cars and burning of buildings. But what they're not going to show you is the restoration and the powerful images that are taking place. Because when clergymen and women walk into a situation, things change. Come on, somebody. Don't get me preaching. I've been thinking about this the whole time, that anytime you have a mess, God sends a messenger to be able to give a message of hope and restoration. I love the word restoration. My life has been restored because people walked into my world and challenged me with three statements that changed my life. What if God is real? What if prayer works? And another one, what if you have a different destiny? Well, you know what? The people that are going to be on right now, Pastor Charles and Lindsay Caruco, are pastors of International Outreach Church in Vernesville, Minnesota. And they have a different destiny that is connected into your purpose. I wanted to talk to these two people. I was introduced by them via text with a friend of mine, Lisa Hill. She, my, by the way, if you have a chance, uh, go to BrioTV.com. And check her out. Amazing things are going on with her and her ministry. But today, I want to welcome Pastor Charles and Lindsay Caruco to the program because they have a powerful message that is changing ground zero of where George Floyd was murdered. And what the media doesn't want to show you, we're going to show you today. But I want to welcome Pastor Charles and Lindsay to the program. How are you guys? Doing very well. Thank you for having us. It is my honor and privilege to have the two of you on the program. I want to ask you, what, why in the world that you, the two of you decided to go to Ground Zero? And how did that happen? Because most people don't realize that whenever there's a crisis, God always has his people in place for that moment. Thank you, Mondo. We are so honored to be here today. And first of all, I want to say you actually look so good in person. And also, we love the message and the heart you carry. 
and I was anticipating this moment. And anyway, we were on a 40 day fast just um, right after Easter. And God had said that he would do great things on the day of Pentecost. So we did not know what great things would look like, but we continued with the 40 day fast. And the day before the fast ended, George Floyd was murdered. Wow. And that is what began to look like, yes, Pentecost Sunday is coming. God will send somebody, and we began to pray for God to send somebody to the chaos, the, the crisis, the riot, the looting. The buildings were burning in our city. Everyone was outraged by the death of George Floyd. But the, the more we continued to go to the city with the family and to engage, the more the Lord kept drawing us to be the ones to do something. And it was on May 30th, 24 hours before Pentecost Sunday, that the Lord clearly said, tomorrow, go to ground zero wow. and proclaim a message of unity. That is how they started. Wow. Pastor Lindsay, I got to ask you, what did you think when Pastor Charles says, we're going to ground zero? Were you afraid? Were you scared? What was your emotions like? Yeah, so we both woke up on May 30th and we had been sleeping in different places. He was with some of the kids. I was with some of the other kids. And so when we woke up, we came together and he says, we need to go to Minneapolis and do something. And I said, yes, we do. Because God spoke to us both in the night. Wow. That we were the ones to go. And so I said, what are we going to do? He said, let's go do a rally at Ground Zero. I said, okay, let's go. What are we going to call it? He said, Unity Rally. And I said, absolutely, let's go do it. So we put together a video that night and posted it on Facebook to see if anybody would like to join us. And within uh, about 12 hours, there was 250 people that said, we're, we're behind you. We're, we're, we're all together in this. Let's do it. And so we went on Pentecost Sunday, we did our, the first rally. But I think one of the most important parts is for me being a white person, even being married to a, a, a man from Kenya who's black, I've had my own backlash. Um, I wasn't always received well. If I talked of issues of race, it wasn't accepted. I've been called a racist many times. Um, and so there was fear of getting engaged in these kinds of conversations. But on that morning of May 30th, when I woke up, all fear was gone. And so when he brought it up, I said, absolutely, let's go. God prepared us for this. And we went together on Pentecost Sunday. What was the atmosphere like when you guys arrived at the scene? It was still very chaotic. There was uh, still smoke from the burning building. There was still crazy things happening. Um, the the National Guard had just been called in to come and take control of the situation because it was beyond what the police force could handle. And so we had people that had come in from out of town that were doing all this burning and looting and uh, things were very chaotic. When we went down there on the ground, there was people all over the intersection, it, it, kind of like ground zero, but you could feel, I mean, sorry, kind of like the state fair, but you could feel tensions were really high. There was protesting going on, people shouting angrily um, and just rallying as many people as they could to shout things like no justice, no peace and say his name, George Floyd. Um, and so there was a lot of tension, especially racially. At the rally, my husband, he was the first one to speak. And when he spoke, people listened. They came together we knelt down and began to pray and cry out to God and ask him to heal our land. And the people joined with us, the whole, that whole intersection, people came together and they joined us to cry out to God for this. Wow. But the moment that I took the mic, a, a woman came out and began shouting at me. And she said, you have no idea what we're going through. You're white. You don't understand. 
And she began to communicate her, her hurt and her pain. And she shared with us a poem that her daughter had written that was called, I'm Black and I'm Afraid. Mm. And I read that poem out loud on the microphone for everyone to hear. And as we began to listen to her, it was like God began bridging these racial divides and he began tearing down walls of division and healing began to take place. Wow. Wow. I got to ask the two of you, how do you open up a rally? How do you approach it? There's a lot of people watching and they want to help. And they, they say, man, I want to go there. I just don't know what to do. I don't even know what will be the, the first step to even engaging with the community. So can you walk us through how did it happen? How did you guys engage the community? Because when you're hurt, you're angry. And when you're angry, 